On Sunday, Manchester United have got arguably their biggest game since the return of football post-lockdown. FA Cup semi-final at Wembley against Chelsea, against Frank Lampard, a manager who's been living in the back pocket of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer ever since he took over as manager of United. Three times we played Chelsea this season, three times we've beaten them. Stamford Bridge, we love going to Stamford Bridge now. But Sunday, I think, will be different. I think Sunday's going to be a hell of an FA Cup semi-final. Two teams who are very evenly matched. United in great form. Chelsea, not so much, but still grinding out results. Not sure what to expect on Sunday, but it should be a good game. And I'm going to do my predicted start 11 in this video. As you can see from the surroundings, it's all changing. Things are changing. And it's a new layout as well, so I hope you enjoy the new layout. Spent a few days designing all of it from scratch. So please drop a like on the video if you would. But let's get straight into my predicted start 11 for the game. And the first question is in goal. Sergio Romero, will he keep his place? I think he might have started every single FA Cup game so far. Let me know if I'm wrong in that. But I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will stick to his plans of keeping his number two happy by playing him in the FA Cup. So I'm going to put Romero in the starting 11 here. But David De Gea, while he's been at fault, you know, he's not been himself for some time. He was fantastic against Crystal Palace. He really was. And we shouldn't really have kept a clean sheet, but we did because of him. So maybe that's a reason why he would put him in. I don't think he will. They let me know what you think about that in the comments below. And there's another question at left back. Because Luke Shaw's been playing there every game since the return of football. But he got an ankle injury against Southampton. Then Brandon Williams came on. He bust his head open. So are either of those two fit to play? And then Fosu Mensah surprisingly came in ahead of Diogo Delo against Crystal Palace. So I think probably Fosu Mensah will keep his place. I want to say here on record, I was definitely overly harsh with Fosu Mensah's performance. Over a couple of years since he's played football, over three years or something since he's played for United and left back's not his position. Defensively, he was sound. Going forward, he didn't offer much. But I think that's the reason Solskjaer brought him in, just to be defensively sound. And in that sense, he really did his job. So I think he'll keep his spot. Centre-back partners for me are quite obvious, Maguire and Lindelof. I'm still not sold on Lindelof as a partner for Maguire. I'm still not completely sold on Harry Maguire. There are ups and downs, but against Crystal Palace, I thought Maguire defensively, positionally strong. And I still think we just need the right partner to complement and bring the best out of Maguire. And I still think the, the bye would be better suited to that. But Lindelof keeps getting the nod. So they'll be the centre-backs. And of course, Wan-Bissaka will be right back. Quite a quiet game against Crystal Palace, but it's his former club. I, I think we all semi-expected that, but he'll definitely start. Now, another question lies in midfield. And I think Nemanja Matic will definitely get the nod to start against Chelsea at Wembley. It's, it, it's, it's a game where you want Matic to be there to really control the tempo of the game and control that space in front of our defence. Because that's where Chelsea will be dangerous and that's where United need to stifle them. And that's why Matic, I think, will be better suited than Scott McTominay. I think McTominay will probably come on towards the latter stages of the game. I don't think Matic will last a full 90, but maybe he will. But given how tired we were against Southampton, it was, it was obvious that changes were going to happen against Crystal Palace. And Matic not starting was one of them. But I want to see him in the starting 11 to face Chelsea. And of course, it's going to be Pogba alongside him or just in front of him. And Bruno Fernandes in the number 10 role. Pogba, I'm really enjoying watching in this sort of quarterback, deeping, deeper lying role. But at the same time, it's happened a couple of times now where Pogba's received the ball from defence and just sort of lazily knocked it into space without really looking or being aware of what's around him. And he's lost possession in, in key areas too often. He needs to smarten up in that. But having him receiving the ball from our defence means we're allowed to look up and he can look up and see those passes and start attacks much earlier because the ball's over the top, given how fast and how informed our front three are, that's what you need. And Bruno Fernandes... Look, I said he was my man of match against Crystal Palace. A lot of you said it was Martial. A lot of you said it was Rashford. And some of you said it was De Gea. That's how, that's how tough it was to choose. But Bruno Fernandes is still the key man. He is the man that links this all together. He's, he's the cog, the main cog in the middle. The person you're going to rely on to make the difference. And I think he made the differences, the key differences against Crystal Palace. And I think he'll do the same thing against Chelsea. He's just such a good player. So to have him... And Pogba and Matic is a very balanced, complementary midfield. And that's why it's been working for United so far. And then the question, I suppose, lies in whether or not Martial, Greenwood and Rashford are fit enough to start this game again or whether they're starting to tire. I think even if they are starting to tire, all three of them will start. So I've gone Rashford on the left, Greenwood on the right 
and of course Anthony Martial up front. Rashford, you know, he was sensational against Crystal Palace. When he came back from the lockdown, after his stress back injury, he was a little bit slow in terms of the goal return. But his involvement in the football and the build-up and the tempo and the style and complementing Martial was fantastic. And against Crystal Palace, he scored, he got an assist and he was just, he was involved in everything. And I think a big reason Martial is the striker he is now and, and sort of becoming the number nine he is now is because his complementary partnership with Marcus Rashford as well as Bruno Fernandes, obviously. But Martial is just excelling. He's not just, he's not just scoring those worldies that you remember when Martial just joined. He's scoring worldies. He's playing with his back to goal sometimes, bringing other players into play. I think the, uh, Rashford's goal against Southampton was, was when Martial held the ball up with strength and just laid it off to Rashford, who swept it into the corner. That's something we hadn't really seen from Martial, and I think he's developing new sides to his game that's coming from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's coaching, because Solskjaer is a great striker. And it, for me, Martial is really developing into a great striker. And while he's been having maybe a quiet couple of games by his own standards that he set recently, Mason Greenwood, I think, will keep his place in this team. Maybe it'll be Dan James that comes in from the start. I don't really think that will be the case. I see Dan James, and I think he's being used correctly now. Dan James, you bring on the last 20, 25 minutes if you're chasing a goal and a defence is tired. That's when his pace to get in behind can cause problems. But for me, that front three is so set now. Martial, Greenwood and Rashford I wouldn't want to see anything else if all three players are fit. And going into an FA Cup semi-final, hell yeah, I want all three players playing there. And you'll remember that game against Everton where Martial in the FA Cup, we got that late, late winner. He's got good memories of scoring important goals in the FA Cup for United at Wembley. So fingers crossed he can do the same thing on Sunday. But going into the match, I think both teams will be confident of a performance from their team. I'm not really... Chelsea, you know, they've been stuttering with their form, but for an FA Cup semi-final, they'll get up for it. For United, if you look at the Southampton and the Crystal Palace games, we haven't been as free-flowing as we were in the previous four. But we got the result against Crystal Palace. We scored two goals. And going into this game, we've got to be full of confidence. So let me know what your predictions are in the comments below. But that would be my starting eleven. I've got Romero in goal with Fosu Mensah. Maguire Lindelof as the centre-backs and Wan-Bissaka as the right-back. Matic sitting there as the holding midfielder with Pogba and Bruno in front of him with the front three of Martial, Rashford and Greenwood. I think that is enough, a strong enough team to beat Chelsea. If we play like we have been playing prior to the Southampton and Crystal Palace games, we'd have every confidence of winning this game. But let me know how you're thinking ahead of kickoff. Who would be in your starting eleven? Would De Gea get the nod? Would you bring in Williams instead of Fosu Mensah, even though he's got, what, six stitches on his head now? Or Shaw, would you risk him? Let me know. Matic or McTominay, there's questions to be asked about this starting 11. So let me know your starting 11 in the comments below. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you haven't already. We'll see you on Sunday.